Hi, I'm Rebecca Balcarcel, and I just got back from walking the Camino de Santiago, Camino Frances from Saint Jean Pied de Port to Santiago de Compostela in June of 2023. And I want to talk about walking short stages. So depending on your level of fitness and your energy on a given day, you might want to walk a shorter stage, meaning that you wake up in the morning and you walk, um, you know, maybe 15, 18 kilometers instead of 20, 25 or 30 kilometers. Um, when you're looking at the guidebook, you think, okay, this is, this is probably what an average person can do, and, and I, I bet I could do this, um, unless you know your, your fitness level to be very low, you figure, well, it wouldn't be in this guidebook if it wasn't, uh, you know, manageable, right? I don't know. Um, so I am a person who can walk, you know, two or three hours and be pretty happy. I'm tired, maybe my feet hurt, but... Uh, I'm okay. And I thought to myself, well, if I can walk two to three hours and then have a break and then do another two or three hours, you know, I'm, I'm going to be able to do 25 kilometers a day. And I did. But um, I would say that in your training, if you're going up steep hills and down steep hills and you're able to do all of that for multiple hours at a time, um, Maybe you're fine with the, what I'll call a traditional stage or a guidebook stage. However, if you're a little less fit than like an athlete, or if you're a little bit breathless after a pretty steep hill, you might be miserable trying to do 25 kilometers. Not to say that you can't, but do you want to enjoy your Camino or is it a race, right? It, of course you want to enjoy it. There's also some pressure. Not only the guidebook is seeming to say that you should be able to walk this far, but also everyone around you is following that guidebook too. And some of them really are very comfortable walking 25 kilometers. Others are going to be a lot more happy to walk less. 20 turned out to be a really great number for me. Um, I'm in my early 50s. I walk regularly, but I'm not an athlete at the moment. Um, for me, 20 was very comfortable. I pushed myself to do 25, even 29 on my longest day, but I paid for it. You know, my feet hurt more. The next day I was more tired. I didn't enjoy my evening as much. You want to not only think about the walking, but what after the walking. So if once you're done with your walking, you have stuff to do. You're going to be washing clothes probably. You're going to be needing to get something to eat. You might have to walk to where that is. There's things to see possibly, like a church maybe in the village or in, especially if you're in a city. So you're not really done walking when you finish the stage. There's going to be more standing up and more stuff to do. I suggest a period of rest before you jump into all that, like put your feet up on the wall straight up if you can, um, rub your feet, do things, whatever you need to do if, if you might be getting a blister. So there's, there's foot care, leg care, knee care that you might be doing. But then you're probably going to be walking some more, even if it's just to wash the clothes or to find something to eat. So think about short stages. Do not feel bad about short stages. You will get out of sync with that first group of people you started with, maybe. But you know what? They're going to take a rest day eventually. They'll do a short day eventually. You might uh, catch up with them very naturally anyway. So give yourself short days if that suits you so that you can enjoy your Camino. And it actually says, right, in a lot of the guidebooks, don't feel like this stage is a law. You know, you don't have to do this whole thing. But we really feel like we do, <laughs> especially when everyone else is doing it and when we feel like we want to challenge ourselves a bit. 
but really, really think about short stages and plan for them with your return ticket. Uh, it, if you're like me, you're coming from very far away to Spain, and I wanted to book a return ticket. I gave myself several extra days, not only rest days that I definitely planned for, but extra, extra days. And I thought, well, if I get to Santiago, I can spend them there. And honestly, you can spend two or three days in Santiago and see things there and enjoy meeting people who come in after you. Um, so it's fine to build in some days at the end that could be shaved off so that you could expand your walking time so you have flexibility. If you can at all afford the time and money to be in Spain longer, definitely think about doing shorter stages. Obviously, some people want to finish as fast as they can, and that's their whole goal. And a lot of us have a hard time setting aside a whole month already. And so even a few more days feels like too much. But really, look and see what, what would happen if you did 15 to 20 kilometers a day. If you know that physically you're, you're capable, but you're not an athlete, some of these days are really going to be hard, hard. It's not just the first one. They say, okay, day one is the hardest, and then it's all clear sailing. No, every single day, there was something hard for me physically, every day. The hills did not stop just because you went over the Pyrenees. There are hills the whole way. Uh, the Meseta is an exception. You know, you have maybe like five days without a hill at all. And then you're like begging for a hill, like, please, could there be a small hill? <laughs> or maybe, maybe it's even more than five. But most of the time, there are going to be physical challenges. And if it's not a hill, then it's the length of time and the spaces between places. So there are still challenges. Or it's the heat. Uh, or it's the rain. So there are many days when you might want to call it quits at 20 or so. And if you did, what would that look like? Think about that in your planning. Think about that with your return ticket. Give yourself time to really savor your Camino and to not exhaust yourself to the very last ounce of energy every single day. Shorten those stages. Have a happier Camino if that works for you. I think it might work for me next time. So I'm going to take my own advice um, if I do another Camino and plan for some shorter stages. All right. Well, if this is helpful for you, great. And buen Camino.